FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. Hey everybody, welcome to Faux Monday, the companion show to FOMO Sapiens. We will of course be back on Thursday with a brand new episode of FOMO Sapiens. But until then, happy Monday. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now on Thursday, my guest is Alex Amuyel. She runs Solve, which is an initiative of MIT that helps to solve the world's biggest problems using an entrepreneurial mindset. So she's out there really on the front lines, and she has written a book all about how all of us can be part of the solution. It's called The Answer Is You. And so in that vein, I wanted to talk about one aspect of what we get into on Thursday, which is the idea of the 10% activist. So as many of you know, and if you don't know, then I guess you're new to the show because I talk about it pretty frequently. I wrote a book called The 10% Entrepreneur, all about how to start an entrepreneurial venture while holding down your day job, start something on the side, try it, see if it goes well, maybe scale it up. And my book was really focused on, you know, starting businesses. But what I realized once I was out into the world promoting the book is that lots of people take the exact same approach to starting a social venture or a charity or something in the more public sphere. And so in my last book, Fear of Missing Out, Practical Decision-Making in a World of Overwhelming Choice, I came up with the concept of the 10% activist. And that's somebody who is taking the 10% approach and applying it to doing something to change the world, to deal with a cause that's important to them. And so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit with Alex on Thursday, but obviously it'd be way more helpful to talk about it now. Get deep into it. That way you are ready and you have the tools to do exactly that. Become a 10% activist if that's of interest to you. Now, before we get into what this looks like and how you do it, I do want to just give you a great example. And this actually I used in Fear of Missing Out. It's a friend of mine from college called Dan Brentro. And Dan lives in South Dakota where he is a lawyer. And his oldest child, his daughter, Raina, when she was a little, little bit younger, when she was sort of in her early teens, was diagnosed with this very rare disorder called Friedrich's ataxia. And what that does is it really attacks your nervous system and you lose certain certain abilities to, for example, walk. And over time, it is a fatal disease. And so it's a very serious disease that, of course, getting that diagnosis, Dan and the family were completely in shock and they tried everything they could to find a solution. And what was really insane about the situation is they realized that there was a doctor that wasn't far from their home that was actually running trials on potential solutions, but that this doctor had run out of funding. And so Dan took it upon himself to raise the money. He started something called the Finish Life Fund and he ran a, a marathon. Then he got all these people in his community involved and he really just started basically a non-for-profit to raise money for Friedrich's ataxia and to look for a solution for his daughter and for the many other young people that are affected with this terrible affliction. And so I talk about that in great detail, but Dan called me in the middle of this and he said to me, you know, I think I'm doing the 10% entrepreneur, but in a social setting. And that's where the whole notion of the 10% activist came from. And when he told me about that, I, I was fascinated. We actually wrote a couple blog posts on my website, patrickmagnus.com, all about his work. And it just occurred to me how amazing it is that somebody, you know, when you find something in your life that you want to change, whether it's something very personal, like an illness of a loved one that needs research money, or if it's something a little bit, you know, maybe more global in nature, it's climate change or politics or something like that, where it's not necessarily, you know, there's no revenue in it. You're not going to be generating revenue. Uh, in fact, it's probably going to cost you some money, but you want to work on it. The idea of just quitting your job and suddenly becoming a full-time activist is not realistic for most people, right? We got to pay the bills. And so the beauty of the 10% approach, which is taking 10% of your time, money, and energy and getting involved in something that is meaningful to you and then growing it from there 
That's very powerful. And so that is the concept that Alex talks about. She sort of, I guess, you know, having read The 10% Entrepreneur, she saw that as a great sort of first step into changing the world. And so I just want to talk about that today in greater detail. We're going to get into all of the sort of the, the nuances of that and what it sort of takes to actually do it. So we'll start talking about that first, talking about the advantage of doing it after this break. FOMO. FOMO. All right, so I just want to start with the advantages. Why do the 10% activists? First of all, the beauty of the 10% methodology is if you mess up, you do something wrong, your concept is bad, it's okay. It's just a small portion of your time, at least to begin with. So say you start a nonprofit to, for example, help out your child's school. We all know that funding is tight and your kid's school, they want to go on a trip or they want to build a new library, something like that. And you decide, you know what? I want to start a non-for-profit. We're going to raise money in the community. You know what we're going to do? We're going to get people to sign up to a $10,000 annual sponsorship for the school. Okay. So that's your idea. You go out, you try to actually make this happen. And you know what happens? Nobody wants to do it. Guess what? You didn't quit your job. You didn't go in and sort of full time to do this. You tried an idea. It didn't work. You can pivot. You come up with something else. You do a raffle, a big sale, whatever it is. You you get corporate sponsorship. But there's just the, the stakes are so much lower because you haven't gone all in that you can be much more experimental. Number two you aren't going to burn yourself out. Of course, you're working in the evenings and you're working on the weekends, so that's important to recognize that you know you could burn yourself out if you're trying to go full-time in your free time, but you don't have to worry about you know how am I gonna pay the bills, all that stress, all that freaking out. No, you don't have to raise money to be able to support a salary for yourself. You can simply start part-time and you have the space to not have to worry about paying the bills in the meantime. Now, number three, the great thing about starting with 10%, you can always increase it. You can go to 20, 25, 30, 100, 110, whatever it is for you. And so by starting small, you always can go up and you can do so in a sustainable way that makes sense in your life, right? And so if you figure out, wow, this is going well, I want to spend more time on it. You know what? I'm going to spend less time watching television or I'm going to quit the, I don't know, some club that you're involved with. I'm going to go to the gym less, right? Just don't cut the meditation. You've got to meditate every day but you can always increase. Number four, spices up your life. I'll tell you something, when you meet people who have stable jobs, it's not that they don't like their job, but it's like, I work as an accountant, I'm an insurance company, something like that, but they have a passion outside, something that they're building, especially if it's something they care about, that they're investing in emotionally. Those people, they do not talk about the boring day job. They talk about what they're building. It makes life more interesting. It allows you to just push yourself in a new direction, get out of your comfort zone. And once you do that in one area of your life, you are well positioned to potentially do it in another area, right? It's just about showing yourself like, wow, I can kind of do anything. And that is such an important part of why I believe that this part-time entrepreneurship is super important. And finally, it opens new doors. You know, we think about some of the greatest people in our society, people who really, you know, they make history or they're memorable or they make an impact. None of them just do the same thing forever, right? I'm just thinking, for example, right now of Senator Mitt Romney. Now, you may like Senator Mitt Romney. You may not like Senator Mitt Romney, but let's think about this person who started out in the business world, started out working and consulting, then built a private equity firm that he founded. Then he left. He became the head of the Olympics for Salt Lake City. Then he became the governor of Massachusetts. I was going to say Utah, but no, Massachusetts. Now he's a senator from Utah and he does all this crazy stuff. And so like he never stood still. He's kind of like the Madonna of his little part of the world, right? Always reinventing. And when you open new doors and try new things, you can reinvent. I think about my own experiences as a 10% entrepreneur, those early endeavors were so stressful, like starting a company with a friend and then investing in some venture. Now, 10 years later, I'm working on a million things. And because I have a sense of possibility, I understand what it takes. And I know sort of how to balance the risk, the reward, the time, all the commitments. I have a developed sort of a spidey sense for that. And that's what happens. The more you do it, the more you build those muscles and flex them, the more you're capable of actually doing the things you want to do. All right. So we will get into how to do that right after the break. Until then, just stand by. FOMO. FOMO. 
All right, so let's talk about how you can actually do this. How do you become a 10% entrepreneur? How do you succeed? How do you make it sustainable? It's about four things. Number one, it's about assessing your resources, which are time, money, and intellectual capital. Time, financial capital, and intellectual capital. Number two, it's about playing to your strengths, picking things that combine what you're good at and what you like to do. Number three, it's about having a, an investment process. It's like thinking about, you know, you were talking about the, uh, the resources you have to invest. Well, how do you actually invest them? How do you make a smart investment of time, money, and intellectual capital? And finally, how do you leverage your network? Because your network makes all of these things a lot easier. It just makes you more likely to succeed. So let's quickly talk about each one of those. Number one, assessing your resources, time, money, and intellectual capital. I love the saying, if you wanna learn how to get something done, ask a busy person. The reality is all of us spend time in ways that if we really thought about it, don't really match our objectives. The minute that you realize something is important to you, for example, starting at 10%, watching TV, eh, not so important anymore, right? And so it's really about looking how you spend your time and you can write it down and keep a log and say, where can I cut? Where can I open time? You can also, for example, think about how you can partner with other people to open up more time, get a partner, stuff like that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But time is important because if you don't have any time, then you're probably not gonna be able to get much done. Number two, financial capital. If you have tons of money to throw into your nonprofit, amazing. If you don't, you're going to need to raise money, but just knowing upfront how much you can commit and how much you need to bring in from other people will allow you to plan appropriately and not overcommit yourself and say, you know what? In six months, we're going to have 33 employees, but I only can invest $5,000 and I don't know anybody who can fund me. Clearly not going to work. So you just want to be realistic there. And third is intellectual capital. And that is what you like to do, what fires you up, what you're good at. And that is really brings us into the, the, the next point of this, which is playing to your strengths. It is the intersection of what you like to do and what you're good at that'll make you successful. Now, when I say what you like to do, you know, you have a passion, you have an interest here. That's why you want to get involved in some sort of 10% activity and the activism space. So thinking about why you are passionate and why you'll be willing to give up part of your Saturday or work on a weeknight or something like that, that's really important. And matching that with what you are good at. And this is the part that I think people struggle with a lot. It's amazing how many really talented people couldn't tell you what they're good at. It's sort of like, well, I, I'm, I'm not sure. And it's sort of like, well, you know, are you sure? Because you're actually, you're really good at financial modeling or you're good at design or you're really good at creative ideas and marketing. Sometimes we have to ask the people around us, the people we work with to tell us what we're good at. What I like to do is write a bio and look at all the things you've done in the past and think about what your impact level was and what you did on that project and why it was special. Because what happens is we surround ourselves oftentimes with other capable people and we forget that if we were to walk into Times Square, the skills that we have, unlike in the office where maybe we're surrounded by, by people who have like similar skills, we would not have that in Times Square. So think about what sets you apart from the general public, not just the people in your office, and that'll give you an idea of what you're good at. Next is the investment process. We figured out how much time we have, we figured out how much money we have, and we figured out what we're good at and what we like to do. But then you gotta figure out what you're gonna do with that. And so what's really critical is to think about a couple of things. Number one, never get involved with something that you don't actually understand. And that means that you know we don't all have the answers. Go out and do the research like you're writing a business plan. In fact, write a business plan for your 10%. Number two, don't get involved with people you don't know. Get to know people because that's where you get burned. You need great partners to do anything, especially if it's part-time. And if you get in bed with people you don't know, you could get super burned. I know that's a mixed metaphor. I could have gone another direction with that, but I did not do that because this is a family-friendly show. And number three is really have a clear idea about what your impact is going to be. Because if you don't know that, you probably haven't thought through parts one and two. Finally, leverage your network. You cannot build anything alone. Think about the people you know who can help you, whether they can actually give their time, whether it's money, ideas, connectivity. There are so many different ways that people can help you. Do not be afraid to ask, because unlike a typical sort of for-profit business, when you're building something that is changing the world and making a difference in the community, you are you don't have to feel bad asking. It's not like, hey, give me money so that I can make a bunch of money for myself and give you a percentage of that. It's like, hey, give me money to help people who have this challenge in their life. We're going to change the world. Get involved. It's amazing. It's fun. Work with your friends. Work with your family. Do something that is meaningful to all of you, and you get to hang out more together. 
All right, so that is the story of the 10% activist. You'll hear more about this on Thursday. But until then, just think about it. If you have ideas, thoughts, if you've done this, write me. You can find me at Let's Connect at PatrickMcGinnis.com, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis. Love your ideas. Would love to hear them. And uh, until Thursday and our conversation with Alex, take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. 